OK, so now we come to our uh, next form uh, and its way of writing complex numbers. OK, you should have seen uh, this style here where we uh, use the rectangular or Cartesian form of a complex number. OK, uh, simply in the form A plus BI or X plus YI in some cases. Um, so what we're going to start off with here is to just graph it on an argon diagram as you may have been familiar with already, uh, we have three on the real axis, root three on the imaginary. Uh, so that's going to be about 1.7, so around there. OK, so that's graphed. And another thing you may have done uh, is to find the modulus r. OK, that's the length of this line, OK, this distance, and the uh, argument, the uh, theta, the angle uh, between the real uh, axis and this complex number. OK, so how do we find R? Well, with uh, essentially the Pythagorean theorem, uh, we're going to have the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared all square rooted. So in this case, that's going to be the square root of 9 plus 3. That's root 12, and if we want to simplify that, that's root 4 times root 3, so that's 2 root 3. For the argument, um, we, well, we can now consider a uh, right angle triangle. Okay, and in that case, uh, we have uh, the opposite as root 3, the uh, adjacent side uh, as 3. And, well, if you have opposite and adjacent, then that's going to be um, tan. OK, so arc tan or inverse tan of root 3 over 3. And that's going to be pi over 6. OK, so we have pi over 6 and 2 root 3 as our modulus. Um, so where are we going with this? Uh, well, we just uh, use tan, and you can see many similarities here with the unit circle uh, concepts in basic trigonometry, and that's what we're going to look at next, okay? Uh, how to use a cosine and sine here as well. Okay, now that we have a right angle triangle, we have an angle, and well, we're going to go from there. So as we said, um, if you have a plus bi, a is going to be always the adjacent because it is the real part, and uh, b is always going to be the opposite because that's always the imaginary part, and uh, that's how we put, that's how we always write these axes in, in that order. Okay, so we're going to have a here, we're going to have b here. Um, so is there another way of writing a and b? Uh, well, you can easily relate a to our uh, modulus and argument there, okay, by saying that, uh, well, we have adjacent and a hypotenuse. Therefore, we can say that cosine of pi over 6 equals a over 2 root 3. And that would mean that a equals 2 root 3 cos of pi over 6. OK, similarly, uh, sine of pi over 6, as sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, would equal b over 2 root 3, and hence b equals 2 root 3 sine pi over 6. OK, so this complex number could be written, uh, instead of a and b, we could be giving them these values here, even though those look uh, more complex right now. Um, so uh, a could be replaced with cosine of pi over 6. Um, and b could be replaced by, uh, sorry, 2 root 3 sine of pi over 6. Uh, so it's that times i. Um, now we have obviously lots of similarities here. Uh, we can factor out even uh, 2 root 3. And I can, so I can say uh, 2 root 3 cosine plus sine 
times i, both of pi over 6. Um, but also, uh, what do we see here? We see that I have my modulus, and I have my argument in both these spaces. Therefore, I can say that I can go from any uh, Cartesian form, complex number, Okay, if I know the r and theta values, I can this, uh, this these calculations that we did there will always apply. So I can say that this is always going to be r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay. Um, now, finally, we also have an abbreviation for this as well. Okay, because the theta is always going to be the same um, in both cosine and sine. Um, as an abbreviation, uh, uh, mathematicians we're, we're quite lazy. Um, we abbreviate this to uh, cheese or cis. Um I go with cheese usually. Uh, so this here just means, well, what we have in the bracket over here. Okay, it just means cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Okay, but it's always quite long to write, and um, well, it's always in exactly the same pattern. So let's give that pattern an abbreviation. So r cheese theta. Okay, so let's uh, and and what we have here, sorry, is the polar form of writing a a complex number. Okay, and it may seem uh, a bit more complicated still, um, even if we do abbreviate it to cheese, um, but it will have a, a major benefits uh, yeah. moving forward, um, even in just uh, multiplication and division of complex numbers, you start to see benefits and then converting it into further forms and uh, roots of complex numbers and, and all those kind of things, uh, it's going to become um, probably the more sort of respectable form of writing a complex number, uh, if that makes any sense. Now, um, what if I want to just convert between the two? So converting uh, this to uh, polar form, firstly, uh, well, we essentially have converted Cartesian to polar above, so it's going to follow quite a similar process of finding R, firstly, Okay, um, minus one squared. That is going to be root three plus one. That's going to be root four, and hence two. All right. Then, um, theta is going to be inverse tan of imaginary over real parts uh, and well your calculator may tell you minus 30 uh, but if uh, you should know by now that you can your inverse tan values uh, have uh, infinite answers and they're all sort of 180 degrees apart or, or pi radians apart um, Radians probably would be more appropriate here, but let's go degrees for this one. Um, now, if you were to, we need to pick one of those, obviously. Uh, if you were to graph that on an argon diagram, uh, what you'd have is a negative imaginary or a positive real. Um, so that might be somewhere around there. Okay, and I'm going to want the argument that goes all the way around there. Um, so. I'm going to ignore the, the minus 30, even though that wouldn't necessarily be technically wrong. Uh, the 150 value is wrong. That, that refers to the second quadrant. Um, so I'm going to go with the 330. OK, so my, uh, my argument, my theta is 330. Uh, so I, can, I don't need to use all those middle steps here that we had above. Uh, now I know that um, I can plug those values straight into the polar form. So cos of 330 
plus i sine 330 or 2 cheese 330 okay so you want to get very used to uh, doing that process there okay and especially adjusting for the quadrants is an, an easy way to slip up okay so what about um, converting back uh, well what do we have here we have let's write it out in the, the long form and in fact I can even uh, expand these brackets and so I literally I'm able to see the real part and imaginary part okay because that's what I want um, in my uh, rectangular form eventually okay I want to know a and b I want to know a the real part and b the imaginary part okay so the real part is is still just what we have here and the imaginary part is still just what we have being multiplied by i um, and 3 times cos of 5 pi over 6 is very simply um, equal to some number equal to some value um, and in fact uh, cos of 5 pi over 6 is um, going to be uh, root 3 no sorry uh, negative root 3 over 2 yes negative root 3 over 2 and so multiplied by 3 we're going to have negative 3 root 3 over 2 um, is simply that evaluated okay um, sine of 5 pi over 6 is a half uh, half times 3 is 3 over 2 and I have suddenly uh, back to rectangular form Cartesian form of my complex number that I was given in polar form initially